just kidding. I made this cool effect using OBS and retro effects. I'd like to demonstrate a few techniques I've picked up as I've become an advanced OBS user. I've had a lot of fun playing around with OBS recently. I like to make what I call video collages, where I can combine and overlay multiple video elements at the same time to create a virtual reality or scene that makes me feel nostalgic. <laughs> Setting up the project itself. So I'm gonna go here and click, I'll click settings. Here on the video pane, you can customize the resolution. By default, it will be populated with the resolution of your display, as well as 1080p and 720p. But here in this box, you can just type whatever you want in. So go ahead and put 2880 by 2160. You'll want the scaled resolution to match the base resolution. The only other thing to take a look at is the recording path here. So you'll just wanna take note of this. I think by default, it's just the movies directory in your home folder, uh, but it might be somewhere else. So if you have a specific place where you'd like this to go, go ahead and select that there. For each new project, I like to create a profile, which is what includes all of the settings that we just set. So I've saved this as 2880 by 2160. Go ahead and create a new scene collection as well if you don't already have one. This is what actually keeps track of your sources, not the settings, but just the, the media sources. Now that we have our profile, our settings set, and our group, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding some sources. So I'm gonna come here and I want to first add an image. This will be my background, so I'm gonna call it BG. And then I'm going to navigate to my overlay that I've created in Affinity Designer. This is based on a asset that I found on YouTube. I'll include the link uh, below, which I grabbed and then modified a little bit. I didn't do a very good job Photoshopping the green out, but. So I like to start here um, and this is transparent. So I'll go ahead and lock this. And then what I like to do is add another one. In this case, it'll be a video. So I'll say, it's actually gonna be a video of a waterfall. This again is a video that I found on YouTube and I archived. Uh, depending on your footage, you'll probably wanna check loop. Restart playback when source becomes active. If you're looping the footage, I would say do not do this because you don't want it to do that. If you're turning off and on the footage, you just want it to be seamless, correct? Uh, I, don't, I think that's irrelevant. Okay, so it's on top of our computer, but I'm gonna go ahead and drag the source behind it, just like a layer in Photoshop. And I can go ahead and expand this. And man, look at that. We're already looking pretty vapory, aren't we? I am going to go ahead and add my webcam. So I'm gonna go add a video capture device. I'll call it webcam. I have found that labeling these correctly uh, is useful as I get a lot of sources and it's easy to confuse which ones they are, especially when you're trying to mix audio and things like that. 
So the device, I'm just gonna use my studio display camera. Preset high, that's fine. You can change the resolution. Okay, so here's me on my webcam. Now, what I love to do, first, I'm gonna drop it behind, because I want my face to be on the computer. Something like this. Looking pretty good, right? Okay. On my studio display camera, I have whatever it's called where it follows you. Center stage turned on. That way, when I'm moving around, if I'm on stream, it is following me around. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, okay, but what about this crap on the side, right? That looks bad. What you need to do is select that source. So if it's kind of hard to tell where you're selected, down here in the sources, click webcam. You'll see that it highlights it with this red box and it has these little anchor points that you can grab. By default, if you just click and drag them, it's gonna do that, right? Which you don't wanna do. So what I'm gonna do, click and hold Alt slash Option, and you'll see, look at that. Now, instead of adjusting the size of the video, it's cropping it. So I can just go ahead and drag that in to the size of the frame there. And now we have me on the computer with the background. I don't really like, I wanna show the waterfall more though, so. So that's a little bit better. Now we can get a little bit of that waterfall action. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, I think that I have an ugly face. So what I like to do is back to my webcam and we're gonna play with some effect filters. There is a plugin called Download the Retro Effects Package. You can find the OBS forum post here, which links to their GitHub. Go ahead and click on the release. Get the latest version for your platform. Once you've installed Retro Effects, you can come back to your effect filter window and go ahead and add a new effect. And you'll see that the Retro Effects option now shows up. <gasps> so what I'm gonna demonstrate now is I'm gonna combine a couple of these together. So what I like to do first is I'm gonna go with Retro Codec and I'm going to increase the pixel scale. Leave that the same. Quality, I'm gonna turn down a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna add another Retro Effects layer. Retro Effects 2. And on this one, what I'm gonna do is Posturize. And instead of passing through the colors, I'm gonna map the colors. Color one will be a dark green. Color two will be a lighter green. Maybe add some yellow to it. So. Oh yeah, maybe we'll make it a little bit lighter. Yeah. Okay. So you can go down to two colors. So you can kind of see <laughs> kind of has a Game Boy vibe. I know the Game Boy technically has four, but it's fine. I think two colors looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and get crazy and add one more. Analog glitch would probably look bad. See, kind of ruins the aesthetic, but digital glitch. Yeah, dude, let's go with that. So now inside of my monitor, we've got the digital glitch. I'm gonna add a CRT filter. Add another retro effects, CRT. For this, I like to actually preview it in there. So I'm gonna drag my window off the monitor now. Perfect. So now I look like I'm trapped in a computer, help me. Obi-Wan Kenobi, I have a bad connection. Uah. See, look how cool that is now. And it's like, I'm kind of anonymous. Like if you think that you look kind of ugly, it looks cool, right? I've combined this with uh, like 
using a Palm Pilot or a Game Boy or a crappy digital camera is like the LCD frame instead of a monitor. And it also looks pretty freaking cool. Finally, I wanted to cover some tips I've learned for audio monitoring, meaning listening to the audio of the sources that are being played. I'm gonna add some music. So I'm gonna go media source. Oblique occasion. Let's just go with one of these. We'll go loop. I don't want to restart it. I don't know what hardware decoding means. Great. You can see that it added the media source. However, I do not hear anything on, on my headphones. You can see for the music media source, if I click it, we have a scrubber to skip through it. But also here in the mixer, we can tell that it's playing audio, but we can't hear anything. What we need to do is click advanced audio properties and then here for the music source, click monitor and output. Now I hear it. Okay, so I've added my microphone and the music, but it's kind of hard to hear it right now, right? I'm gonna go ahead and mute the music until we get this figured out. What we wanna do is for our music, click the filters and then click audio video filters, add one and add a compressor. You can leave it compressor or call it side chain. I'm gonna leave a link to the website where I always get this information from. We're gonna add a compressor, set the ratio all the way to the max. The threshold turn down to around negative 40 decibels. You can play with this. And in fact, now I want to go ahead and unmute my music. So you can see as I adjust the threshold, it's actually adjusting how loud it is. Go ahead and turn up the attack. I like a fairly quick attack of about 20 two seconds, or sorry, two seconds, and then a release of around the same thing. Maybe you want a little bit longer release, just in case, so it's not so up and down. Output gain, you can leave the same. Set sidechain ducking source to the source of your microphone. So check this out. Hello, how are you? Maybe a little too much. Check one two hey welcome to the stream so adjusting the threshold that's just going to adjust how much it lowers the volume hi now i have something to say and i want you to be able to hear it and i want you to still be able to hear the music but not everything so there you go now we have a source that is being side chained or ducked i'd like to record an intro for this video using 86 box and this OBS scene I've set up. So I'm going to add a new source in OBS for a macOS screen capture, and I'll call it 86 box. And I'm going to set like a window capture. That's a little bit better. I always uncheck show cursor. Uh, generally speaking, OBS is kind of weird about how it treats windows and stuff on Mac. So my preferred super advanced OBS technique is to actually just get a second monitor. So I picked up a super cheap four x three monitor, which is what I'm using to record this video right now. So window capture, I'm gonna capture my uh, 86 box window and that looks good. So if I trim this down by using my advanced OBS technique I mentioned of holding alt slash option, then I can go ahead and trim that. The aspect ratio is not perfect, but I'm gonna go ahead and throw it behind my background, which will be good enough. Now let's add our CRT filter. We're gonna add a retro effects filter. I'm gonna change it to CRT. Foster mask is disabled. I just don't like it for this. Set some bloom, a little threshold, vignetting, a little bit of barrel distortion. Messed with the levels and it's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and resize this. Cool. Yeah. Rough 
roughly centered. OBS will should also capture the audio as you can see here in the audio sources. So what I'm going to do now is go into 86 box. Great. Stop recording. And now I have recorded myself an intro for this video and I'm going to cut it together. Pretty much it for my advanced OBS techniques. Thanks for watching.